Hello and welcome to this special program that we have for you, Sharing Your Vision. My name is Elaine Enriquez, and I'm so honored and so privileged to have with me two special women. Today we have my co-host. She is a professional singer. She's also part of OVM Radio and OVM TV in the area of music, salsa music. And with me today is Vicky Romero. Welcome, Vicky. Thank you for being here with me, co-hosting this special program. It is an honor and a pleasure. I'm so excited because we have so many things to talk about today. Yes, and we have a very special lady here. And um, it's just an honor to have the founder of the Women in Jazz. Yes, get ready, women. The women in music. That's for sure. And with us is Dr. Joanne Cartwright. Welcome, Dr. Joanne Cartwright. Wow, I am amazed. I am so honored again to have you here. It's a privilege. Well, it's my pleasure and my privilege. Anytime I get to be with progressive women, it just lights me up. So I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right, let's go then. How did you come to music? Is it as a child or is it when a special happening in your life took place? I was four. My mother must have thought that I had some talent and she took me to dance in school. And I studied dance for four years with a beautiful woman, Bernice Johnson. But her husband was a saxophone player. So my mother used to drop me off at their house. And I would wait for Bernice to come pick me up. And this is from four to eight years old. And her husband would take me down in the basement on the wall were all the jazz artists, you know, Nat King Cole, Count Basie, Sarah Vaughn, pictures, you know. And he would be in the ba basement practicing his saxophone. And, you know, children are like sponges. But I wasn't, it wasn't until I was 27 years old that I realized that was how I learned how to scat. Like, you know, jazz. I learned that at the tender age of four in the basement of my dance teacher's house. And that inspired you throughout your entire life. From then on, I was on stage. You know what really struck me, Vicki? The footlights. We were in a, a legitimate theater from four years old to eight. We would do like nine to 11 routines. We had an audience full of people and I'm four, you know. And ever since I saw those footlights, it was like, I, I love the stage, you know. It really wasn't the applause for me. I didn't hear, I don't remember hearing, but the lights, it was the lights that got me. And I just want to make a correction. It's not Joanne Cartwright. It's Dr. Joan Cartwright. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I make that differentiation because I grew up with a Joanne. So she's Joanne. I'm Joan. <laughs> Wonderful. Dr. Cartwright, take us through time. When was the moment that you started to compose music? Oh. That is such a lovely question. I was on a bus in Philadelphia in 1977. That was before you were born, right, Elaine? Close. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, the music came to me. Um, I could hear it. Da 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 da. 
and it's called Moving Song. And it's never, I never recorded it in a recording studio, but it is on YouTube. You can go and see me singing Moving Song at the Lauder Hill Jazz Festival that I produced. And so it is also recorded by a steel pan player, Bickley Rivera. So it's on Spotify, Moving Song. And that was my first song. And I've written over 60 since then. And I'm the only woman in the world with a jazz and blues song book. No one has disputed me. And if you want to dispute me, it's okay. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I like that about you, Dr. Cartwright. <laughs> I have a question. What are some of the highlights of your musical career? Oh, this, is, this show is too short for that. Well, Mm. Okay, just give me a minute, okay? So, in 1982, I was invited to be an honorary MC at the Cool Jazz Festival in Philadelphia. And I had three choices of who I wanted to introduce. Oscar Peterson, the MJQ, which is Milt Jackson, or Ella Fitzgerald. So which one do you think I chose? Ella. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the height of it was at the end, and mind you, I wrote a speech to, to come out and introduce Ella Fitzgerald, right? So I said, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you the high priestess of her people. And I'm going to go blah, 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 blah. All of a sudden, the people, 10,000 people went insanely crazy. And I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. I look to the right and Ella is walking out on the stage. So I got off the stage. They tell me at the end, after she sings, go back out, tell the people to get home safely. So I go back out and I say, thank you for coming and make sure you get home safely. And they go crazy again. And I don't know why. And I look to the right and Ella Fitzgerald is walking across the stage toward me with her arms wide open. She comes and takes me in her arms. And that's it. What else do I need as a jazz singer? Wow, that's a great a highlight. Story. Wow, I'm honored to hear it. I'm I one couldn't of her even fans. talk. Wow. My daughter and I went backstage with her. My daughter's 15 standing there. Miss Fitzgerald, everybody thinks my mother sounds like you. And I'm just like, I'm in the room with Ella Fitzgerald. You understand? This is my idol since I was 10. My father had all of her records. So that's just one of the hotlines. I have another question for you. Please. Are you aware of the challenges women face in the male dominant field of music? I tell you, this show is too short. So I did my doctoral dissertation entitled Women in Jazz, Music Publishing, and Marketing. I discovered six keys to success for women musicians that can apply to anybody. Anybody. Okay. So they are branding, marketing, teamwork, 
networking, accounting, and negotiation. These six keys men are very good at, but women are not, because women work as individuals. They keep the house, they cook the food, they take care of the children, and even when they work, a lot of them work as individuals, not really on the team, okay? So men are very good at teamwork. Men are better at, than women at negotiating contracts. Men know how, who they are, and what they do, and how to say it. But women, we do so many things that we don't pinpoint that one thing. So women are marginalized in that women earn 15, one, five, percent of the 19 billion dollar music industry. Now let that sit in. So the orchestras that are all male, the jazz bands that are all male, that are funded by your tax dollars, discriminate against women. They say women don't have the chops that men have on instruments, of course they don't. They don't get the opportunities that men get. So why are women only relegated to vocalists? Voice, well we have a woman, we have a girl singer. Well, first of all, I'm 74 years old. I'll never be a girl again. So if they hire me, they have a woman singer, not a girl singer. The value of women in the music industry is very low, very low. However, Elaine, where were you the first time you heard music? In my mother's womb. The blood rushing through her veins were the strings. The heartbeat was the drum. And she was probably singing. It's the first place you got ears. So every human being experience their mother as a musical instrument before they were ever born. But why are women dissed in the music industry? Vicky, do you know why? Because music is not entertainment. Music is power, plain and simple. And men harness power. They wrench it from each other and they definitely don't think that women should hold power. Women singers do voice work. I wrote this book, Blues Women, the first civil rights workers. These were the first people to talk about, I'm a whole person. I'm not three fifths of a person. But they were marginalized. But they still rose to the top of the music industry. Ma Rainey, Bessie Smith, Alberta Hunter, Ethel Waters, Billie Holiday, Nina Simone. They were always talking about the power of the voice, the power of women. But women still don't get it. Women producers will hire men so they can flirt with them. They can't flirt with women, and they want to flirt. That's what they think music is about. It's not. You can have a church. If you don't have music in that church, are you really worshiping the creator? Music is the sound of the spheres. Music is mathematics. Music is science. Music is magic. Music is not for your entertainment. It is the expression, the deepest expression of the human spirit, the soul. Amen to that. Amazing. Music is power. You have been working here at OVM Radio, OVM TV for many, many years and how important is the empowerment of music, especially your genre? 
Well, as far as like music to me is medicine to the body, to the soul. That's even the Bible says it, that music is medicine to the body, to the soul. And it even says that God himself is the creator of music. So he created us for his glory. And he says that we are his song. Look how important that is. Right. We are his song. We are his poem. So by that being said, it already shows you that there is power in music because the creator himself created music first. If you read the Psalms, the last Psalm 150, go read it. I don't have to tell you what it says. Praise God with the psaltery and timbrel. Okay, so why have women been pushed aside except for the voice? Well, women play drums, women play bass, women play piano. Women play every instrument there is. But when it comes to getting paid to do it, it's a different story. Dr. Cartwright, I want to go into the depths of music without obviously speaking about the importance of women empowering in the music industry. How would you describe the jazz music in particular? Okay, so I wrote a history book called A History of African American Jazz and Blues. Blues is the mother of jazz. Blues is the tears of a black woman who is enslaved in Southern America and her husband is never coming home because he's either hanging from a tree, shot to death, or laying face down in a river, beaten to death. Or he's headed north and he's never coming back. So blues is the moaning of a black woman. Jazz is the child of blues. It took place in New Orleans. Kansas City, Chicago, Philadelphia, and New York. And it evolved into syncopated, um, improvised music. Now music is 12 tones, okay? You have the, di the diatonic scale, which is seven tones, and then the pentatonic, which is five. Seven and five is 12, okay? Music is music is music, okay? Tchaikovsky, Beethoven, and Mozart were improvising. They were jazz musicians. It's just that you take it a little further with bebop. Bebop was the competitive music that the black musicians played to show the white musicians that they couldn't keep up with them. And for years, they couldn't. So it became competition. It was in, uh, infused with testosterone that created this aggressive, fast, you can't do that. It's competition. It's not the point of music, which is community, which is love. It's competition. So then when the white musicians did catch up, then Miles Davis changed it back to the blues with moaning. I think it's either moaning or walking. You have to look at these two songs. Now, mind you, this is all science. This is science. It's physics. 440 is the wrong vibration of music. It should be 432. But the industry sped it up to change our vibration. Some of the songs that you have on your music production. Mm -hmm. Dreaming is one of the songs, and if you have any other that you'd like to share. Wow. 
Well, I've recorded about 12, 13 of my songs out of the 60. And you can go to Spotify, put in Joan Cartwright. So Dreamin' is a blues that I wrote many years ago and dedicated it to the trumpet player, Freddie Hubbard, who I used to give my music to in New York. Well, the year after Ella Fitzgerald, I again was a host at the Cool Jazz Festival in Philadelphia. And this year I introduced Patrice Russian. Well, Freddie Hubbard was the headliner and I had known him since I was about 19 or 20 in New York. Now we're in Philadelphia. So in, we were all in his dressing room and he had a white grand piano. And I sat down and started playing this piece that I wrote. He walked over to me and he says, Joan, is that one of your songs? I said, yeah. He said, play it again. He said, play it again 25 times at least. Joe Sample walked in the room. He said, Joan, play this song for Joe. And I'm looking at Joe. I'm like, oh. he said, Joan, stop blushing and play the song. So I played it. They're standing right in front of the piano. And I hear him say to Joe, I'm taking her into the studio tomorrow to record this. <laughs> uh, really? Okay. And he did. And it was an all-star quartet, okay, with him uh, on, it was a quintet. It was a woman on piano, which was so interesting. Joanne Brackeen, who is phenomenal and so unknown and so underrated. And then Roy Haynes, who still lives, he's 95 on drums. Eddie Gomez on bass, Lou Tobacken on saxophone and flute, and Freddie Hubbard on trumpet. Sweet Return on Atlantic Records. So that is my claim to fame, and it's in his songbook. I'd love for uh, Dr. Cartwright to introduce her magazine that she oh. does once a year. Okay. And it's a special edition. Why, Vicky? <laughs> because moi, I am there, right. representing <laughs> OVM. <laughs> That's right. So this is Music Woman magazine. This is the fourth issue we only publish once a year because paper and ink are very expensive. And we need an angel to come in and help us publish this more. And Vicki, of course, is on page 29, representing OVM Radio. Yes. OMG! <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so this, uh, these are very distinguished women. They always are. And Tracy Fields was on radio at WLRN for 27 years. And she just retired to North Carolina to be with her mother. Monique Veto is the grand dame of jazz in Switzerland. She produces jazz concerts. She produced the first jazz concert in Tel Aviv, Israel. Wow. Reagan Whiteside is a DJ on Clark Radio, WCLK in Atlanta, but she's an award-winning composer and flautist. And Barbara Collin is an agent and promoter in California. And then we have Music Man magazine, and soon we'll have Music Teen magazine. Yes. Yes. All right. This Wonderful. is the third issue. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. What an amazing achievement. And we all need to help so you can continue this great work. I love it. I love it. I want to do this in different languages so people can learn about uh, musicians all over the world. We have 406 members in Women in Jazz South Florida. 
which I founded 15 years ago. And uh, we have 72 men that support us, including Ray Rivera, who Vicky brought to us from Puerto Rico. That's right. And we have 255 musicians from about 23 countries. And no, 23 states, 16 countries, 17 with Ray. And growing, we have members from Italy, Sweden, uh, South Africa, Australia. The, you know, I can't remember all of, but women all over the world have joined us. And we're so proud to be in this wonderful edition. Yes. Of this amazing magazine. Well, you know, yes, I'm, I'm honored. I really am. I love jazz. For all you jazz enthusiasms, look for that magazine, Music and Women. Is it woman? And support it. We need you women. You're called. You're needed. Because together, we are strong. Mm -hmm. Now, can you talk to us, Dr. Joan, about the CDs? Okay. The music. So, I, I this is a six box set of number one to six. And then that one, Vicki, you could pick that up and show it to them. That one is number eight. That's our last CD. Wow. And number seven is the digital best of, the director's pick, okay. And it was on um, TuneCore, but I had some technical difficulties with it, so we'll get it back up soon. But right now you can get the box set and you can get that CD uh, from me. Yeah. Or you just go to the website. Or you can email me at wijsf at yahoo.com and I'll just give me your money and I'll send you what you want. <laughs> Dr. Cartwright, we have images here. Can you talk a little bit about these images? Sure. We have our logo, which is so important because branding is it. A student from University of Miami contacted me. I don't even know her name. And she designed this and we love it. Then our graphic designer took it to the next level so that the magazine covers Music Man and Music Woman. And it's one word. It's not like Music Woman. It's like Superman, Superwoman, Music Woman. <laughs> da -da -da -da. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and also, you know, a couple of my books, I'll, you know, you have those images. That's yeah. what's up, the amazing music women. So, you want to be a singer. That's about the business of music. And then, of course, blues women. I've been doing this lecture around the country on Zoom, and people are really awakened about why these women sang and what they sang about. You are absolutely right. This program is much too short. Yes. So you need to come back. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Can you give a message to our audience, anything that's in your heart you'd like to share? Yes. Find women musicians. Support them. Go hear their music. Buy their CDs. Tell other people about them. Google Jazz in Pink. Gail Johnson, Google, Amazing Music Women on YouTube, Joan Cartwright, Google, Straight Ahead in Detroit, all women groups, Google women groups, lift women up. Wonderful. Vicki, what an amazing time. Well, well, it was, for me, it was quite of an experience. Dr. Joan, is there any way if anybody wants to learn more about your music and the music, women in music, or any other information, is there any way they can contact you? Sure. Just go to Facebook. I'm there. I'm the queen of Facebook, okay? I'm the <laughs> web diva. If you can't find me, you can't find anybody. <laughs> 
I have my friends. I've been trying to find you. No, you haven't. <laughs> you, you <can> get <laughs> no, definitely. We need to bring so, her back. <laughs> my website is W-I-J-S-F dot org. Okay. It's dot com too, but that's just a faith. You'll find the real stuff at dot org. Thank you, Dr. Joan Cartwright, for this beautiful time we've spent with you today, learning about music history, learning about the importance of women and the place that they should hold because they, as well as men, have talent and have mm -hmm. abilities that they can put forth. Thank you so much for that beautiful voice uh, that everyone is hearing and adhering to and making sure that we do things that are uh, for everyone's well-being. Well, Elaine, this has been delightful. I think that we need to do a two-hour special, don't you? Yes, <laughs> let's do it. I am very encouraged. And uh, I'll bring some of the yes, other women. Yes. That would be wonderful. I was just going to say that. Yes. Let's do a special, a continuation of what started today. It was a birthing time. Absolutely. So now we have more things that we can do and we can teach the audience yes about history and the importance her story yes her story yes yes exactly yes and um and let me make a comment we're not feminist no. to all that need to understand this we're just encouraging the women empowering That's women That's it. so they themselves can give forth the talent and the gifts that God has given them. That's right. That's it. Because all the music comes from the creator. Yes. yes. All right. And if you're only using it to entertain and not lift people up, you're making a big mistake. Think about this. Think about how many musicians lost their lives early. We'll leave that right there. We'll have that continue on our next special. Stay tuned. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Vicky, thank for you, being Elaine. my co-host. And you. I love to have you in the future programs. Uh, Dr. Joan Cartwright, wow, thank you so much. I'm so happy to meet you. Me too. <laughs> um, this is just the beginning of a beautiful uh, friendship. friendship. Yes. <laughs> and with that, uh, my dear friends, same with you. We love to have you as well as dear friends. And it's so important for you to leave a message. Let us know what you think of everything that you saw and heard uh, during this programming. And if you're a woman and you're a young woman or any stage of your life, make sure that you fulfill your God's given gifts, your talents. Don't put them on the side. Make sure they're part of your life. And we want to bless you uh, with this message. And uh, now that the program is coming uh, to its fruition, and we also want to invite you to visit our websites. We are at Facebook, and we have Instagram, uh, YouTube, Twitter, many places in our social network that you can visit and learn more about Dr. Joan Cartwright. I know that it's going to be something that you're going to be seeing and learning and reading about and you're going to want to know more. So we're going to bring more programs. I want to bless you and invite you once again to continue this programming. Bye-bye. God bless you all. Right. Thank you. Este fue tu programa Compartiendo la visión Bajo la conducción de Elaine Enríquez Les invitamos a que nos busquen en Facebook Como Compartiendo la visión O síguenos en todas las plataformas De OVM Radio En las redes sociales Como Facebook, Twitter, Instagram Y a través de www.ovmradio.com Les esperamos en nuestra próxima edición De este tu programa Compartiendo la visión